If your nib's too slow and your ink won't flow, here's one of the places that you can go. Larry is here to help you through with Mr. Announcer and Cubby too. It's Larry's Fountain Pen Review. Hi folks, Larry here. Welcome to Larry's Fountain Pen Review. I'm your host, Larry in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, I want to give a special thank you to Frank from Federalist Pens for sending me this pen for review. Brand new pen. Never heard of the brand. So, if you hang with me and make it all the way to the end, congratulations. So, the name of the pen is... Scrix. And it's spelled S-C-R-I-K-S-S. -S -S. It's a new one, at least to me. Uh, so it comes in this cardboard sleeve, which will put it out. And it has a really nice, beautiful pin case, which I like pin cases. Uh, it's a soft to the touch, and it has the name right here, nicely embedded on top of the pin case. Again, it just really feels real nice. When you get this pen case in your hand, you're going to be doing the same thing. Wow. Wow, you're so soft. Ah, probably some good therapy for you. Okay, so let's open it up. And here's the pen. Inside, you have the name in the back of the inside of the pen case. And then here is the pen with the card. The name of the pen and you open it up and it gives it a limited warranty so is there anything underneath let's see no there's not and I'll tell you why in a minute let's unscrew the cap it's a piston filler And here's your blank cap right here. And that's how you will work the piston filler. It's not a removable uh, blank cap. I just call it a blank cap because you can remove some, some you can't. But at the end of the barrel, this is how you will Run your piston. Okay. Nice looking pen. Uh, I like the uh, the gold trim over the white. And it comes in numerous colors. One, two. You can get it in a mint green, indigo. I mean, it's burgundy, black, blue, beige, fuchsia, yellow, and so on, so on. Okay, there's a story about this pen, the history. So, I'll let Mr. Announcer share the history on this fountain pen. During the Spanish Civil War that ended in 1939, <coughs> Scrix, known to have started producing fountain pens in Albacete, Spain, sold his name right to Mo S.A., a Swiss company, in the late 50s. All rights related to the brand uh, was then sold onto the Turkish company Scrix. Since 1964, the company has been producing Scrix ballpoint pens in its own factory building at Baxelavier, Old London Asphalt. The first Turkish fountain pen was produced in 1966 under the Scrix brand. Except for the tip of this pen, code number 17, everything was manufactured domestically. In 1974, a meeting with the French brand Waterman was held. Waterman's world-famous boss, Francine Gomez, agreed on a deal to license production of the Jif Waterman fountain pen to the Scrix company in Turkey. Scrix commenced the production of Jif Waterman fountain pen cartridges and ink. 
The company celebrated its 45th anniversary in 2009 and produced special items to mark the special date. In 2020, Scrix reproduced their iconic 419 model fountain pen with new colors, a piston filler acrylic resin fountain pen. So that's the history on this pen. And uh, if you're interested, you can go to the Federalist Pens and Paper website and check out the pen. The legendary Squix fountain pen 419 has gained a great appreciation of pen lovers all around the world. It is beginning reproduced in limited editions to create a pleasant Nostalgia. The white 419 fountain pen is designed for conventional ink and comes with a sensitive medium nib and a transparent window on the barrel so you can visually gauge the ink level. That's always helpful. With a retro design inspired by the legendary 419 pen, the Strix fountain pen has a piston loading system. The piston mechanism is integrated into the body itself. The 419 fountain pen is made of a gloss black lacquer acrylic resin, while the nib and the stainless steel accessories are plated in 23K gold. The pen that will sure to delight modern and nostalgic collectors. So, the features on this pen. And we'll start there. The cap closed. You can unscrews. So you got a nice cap that stays secure. You don't pull it off. You have to unscrew it. Body is made of acrylic resin, resistant to scratches. It does have a piston filler. Just so we can get a close up of the piston going down. See that right there? Okay. Twenty-three K gold plated stainless steel medium nib. Iridium tip iridium pill top right there. Yep, again that name just pops up. And it has their logo on the nib. Looks pretty cool. It's reproduced in limited edition. The grip section from acrylic resin with a glossy finish. And again, it's resistant to scratch, scratches and strokes. And you have the ink level window right here. And don't forget you have your warranty card right here. So the the 419 fountain pen. The finish is acrylic resin. The trim is a the trim and clip is 23k gold plated stainless steel. The nib is a number five gold plated stainless steel European medium point. And the filling system piston mechan mechanism, bottle ink only, compatible with our handmade leather single pin sleeves in a cozy horse, horse brown, like horse. <laughs> okay, so they do have pin sleeves for these as well if you want to buy one. So let's get to the dimensions of these pens. Then we'll do some writing and cool stuff with it. What does that pen remind you of? I'll leave it at that. The pen length closed is going to be 4.95 inches. Uh, and then when you post the pen, it's going to be 5.8 inches. The diameter of the barrel is going to be 12 millimeters. The total weight of this pen with no ink in it at all is 12 G's. 
So what are you thinking about this pen? I think it's a nice looking color myself. I remember seeing that I had a Sailor uh, that was a white one, really nice looking. I do like the how the gold uh, plated trim complements the acrylic white resin on this pen. It really is a beautiful pen. I believe this pen sells for it at uh, Federalist Pens and Papers, like 40 bucks. Now we'll do a few of the pen comparisons. So, okay, here's the Squicks right here. Uh, up to the Conklin Courage. Way bigger pen, right? So, let's bring that down to the Pelican 205. And you're going to have about the same length. Look at that. Almost, right? So let's go ahead and uncap it and post it and see what we have here. And there you have the Pelican has a larger nib than the Scrix. And the Pelican is also a piston filler. So, that's what it kind of reminds me of it looks like. But then, uh, I have a, a pen, something like this. I have to look for it and do an update that really reminds me of this pen. So, let's go ahead and post the pen because I want to see something here. So, you don't want to twist your cap. Because would that hurt it as far as bringing the piston down? I'm doing this intentionally. No, it's not. So that's cool. Now let's try it again. You can push it on there, make it tight, and it's not going to go anywhere. So that's cool. Just so when you turn it, It eases on down. Now, when you first get the pin, I'm not sure if all of them are exactly like. It's going to be kind of, have a little kind of hard to, to twist it to get the piston going. But once you break that seal, it'll go up and down with no problem whatsoever. No biggie. I'm just telling you like I see it. Now that nib is sure is a little bitty thing. So. Let's see. How this pin operates. So I'm going to use some Robert Oyster. Frankly. Scarlet. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Go ahead and get it ready to fill, and off we go to the races. All right, my friends, here we go. I'm always paranoid about Robert Oyster's bottle. Remember that time I knocked him over? Oh, yes. Oh, that was a disaster. All my Robert Oyster ink was gone. I was devastated. Freaked out. Okay, when you ink it up, you're going to have this right in here into the uh, screw-in section. So, what you can do, try to wipe it off, because some people just will totally freak out over that. It doesn't bother me at all. So, I've got a Q-tip. Now, you can get some water if you must and just get that out of the way. But, it is what it is. So, and there is an inner cap in here. It's a little white. Looks like a white little plastic cap. I guess that's where, yeah, where the nib goes into to keep it safe and secure. So, showtime! 
I'm going to get everything ready here. I am so organized, aren't I? Oh, what did I do with the... Oh. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of riding right here. And I'll go ahead and post it because I want to. Wow, I'm impressed already. Very nice. Check for wetness. Nice and wet. Look at that. Smooth nib, wet nib. And look at the ink. Love the ink. That's why I had to buy another bottle. Beautiful ink. Gorgeous ink. Super nice pen. 40 bucks. I believe that's what they sell for at uh, Federalist Pens. Reverse writing. Look at that. Wow. Sweet, really, really nice. Down strokes and cross strokes. Looks like it's a medium nib. And then you can get a, a fine nib out of it. Really a nice fountain pen. Well, there you have it, my friends. Now just remember, when you're posting this pen, when you take it off, you want to make sure you don't disengage this piston top here because all that ink will be screwed out. So, unpost it. I have small hands. It would fit. Okay. But for me, I'd have to post the pen. Then it's a perfect fit like the Pelican 205. Same as that the thing for me there too. So, Really, 40 bucks, if that's what they sell for, I'm pretty sure it's what they sell for. But don't quote me on that. Just check out uh, Federalist pens and paper. Uh, worth every bit of the money. And on the band, it does have the pen's name. And the front and the back. And on the clip, it has the S. The initial S for the pen's name. Scrix. And as you go up the barrel to the, I mean the, sorry, the cap to the top of the finio, you'll see another thin gold band attached to the clip. And of course you go down the barrel, thins out, where the pen, can, the cap can post. Remember, this is where the piston mechanism is. Twist. So, always beware of that. And then, as you go down the barrel, you'll see the ink window. And that beautiful ink, scarlet, frankly scarlet. It really is beautiful ink. I love it. Uh, that's why I got a bottle. So, and you'll feel where the uh, cap will screw on to the grip section, but they're not bothersome. And you have a, you don't have a big grip section, but it's going to be big enough for to accommodate, I don't know, you can, even large fingers, because sometimes I tend to hold it up here, my pen. You ever find yourself doing that? You know, this pen's going to be a lot of fun, a whole lot of fun. And, you know, if you're looking for a decent fountain pen that's not going to bust a bank, that's going to be worth the money you spend on it. 
You need to check this pen out. This pen is nothing but an awesome little pen. It's a cool pen. Definitely cool. I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't think it was going to perform well. I, you know, I said, oh, okay. But I have to be honest about the pen, right? So, when I first saw the pen, I loved the color. I loved the shape. I loved the feel of the pen. I like it because it unscrewed the cap. Piston filler. I can take piston fillers, uh, take it or leave it. I prefer the uh, converters myself. Easier to clean. But this one has an ink window. That was cool. Now, when I saw the nib, I said, okay. I don't think this nib's going to be all that great. Well, I think different now. Once I put the nib to paper, that nib did extremely well. Smooth nib, wet nib. That's what I look for in my pens. I'm a happy camper. Totally satisfied. Then when I used the Robert Oyster Frankly Scarlet, that blew me away. That was a double pop. Love the ink. Love the pen. Great combination. Check out Federalist Pens if you're interested in this fountain pen. Leave your comments below. And remember, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, why not subscribe right now? And don't forget to hit that little bell. It'll notify you and I. Yo, come on. So, I'm going to give you a bell. I'm done for today. God bless each and every one of you. Take care. Wash them hands. A lot of peace and love coming your way. And as always, my good friend, don't text and don't drive. One last thing before I go. I didn't forget. Well, let's clip on this thick shirt. If I do it on the inside, it will. Because I have a thick collar. That's the only thing. So, yeah, it's fine. Secure. It's going to work. Guaranteed. Bye.